some of that down, but this thing is looking more and more bizarre. And this guy looks like one of the fruitiest nutballs. I mean, all these mass shooters that have weird questionable government connections look like they come from Mars. But this guy looks like a Muppet or something. I mean, does anyone in their mind, he used to be handsome and, and a pretty good reporter. We found some of his old reports. Now he looks like he's been on something. I think this guy was in somebody's clutches. I'm not sure of that. He just looks like he's been in a mental ward for five years on Thorazine. Something is wrong with this guy. I bet money. He was on some type of psychotropic. What do you guess? Um, let, I'll take another direction. So let's say he's not drugged. Let's say he's not crazy. Let's, I've never seen them when they yeah. are drugged. But, Look, go, yeah. but, but let's say they're not. Let's. Um, this could be a direct result of how um, American people, especially the left progressives, they have chosen to internalize racism instead of actually putting things out on the table and being straightforward about it. And this goes back to what Malcolm X would say. And if you look at one of the speeches he did, he talked about how there's this consensus that the South is racist and the North is anti-racist. Guess which people moved out of their neighborhoods when the blacks came into their neighborhoods. The Democrat, the Democrat Northerners moved out of their neighborhoods immediately as soon as black populations came in. The Southerners lived alongside with their black neighbors and vetted their frustrations and found a way to co-live and uh, get along. So when you- Well, yeah, that's the cultures are pretty much the same in the South. Yeah, and but it shows that the way to deal with racist uh, mentality is to have it out in the open, not internalize it and censor people. Because like today, we have nothing on the book burners. We have nothing on the Third Reich. We have nothing on us on the socialist censorship. Oh, the left Russia. now is it's hardcore censored. Yeah, it's the t in America today, we have nothing on the book burners. We are just as bad, maybe to a different extreme. And we a and, and the, the Canadians are even worse. Oh, the Canadians, you can't even have a legitimate conversation with the Canadian person. They're scared to voice any opinion. To such an extent, and that's the goal. Have any. We said they'd ban Old Glory next. Now schools mm -hmm. are banning all flags. Of See, th then soon all images are evil. Yeah, I know a man who lost his entire career and has been totally discredited uh, and slandered because he used the term house Negro. Uh, describing a situation where it actually happened. And we had Cynthia McKinney, the first uh, black female congresswoman from Georgia, support this man. And she's a black woman. She said, yes, what he said was true. And the, um, the, the Canadian government and uh, specific school censored him and sued him and used $2 million of student money to get this guy out. Well, that's what it is, is they want to be able to arrest people or ruin them for their speech. This is very, very dangerous totalitarianism. Mm -hmm. Again, a lot of stations leave us when we start the next hour, infowars.com forward slash show to find the free feeds. This is going to be pushed because it is dramatic. I mean, it deserves to be a big story because the footage is so horrific. We played some of it earlier. Uh, I don't want to continue to play it anymore. The yeah, raw I video watch it. is on infowars.com and prisonplanet.com. But understand... Just because we see this makes it personable and makes it personal and makes it hurt. Imagine all the innocent people being killed by Al-Qaeda and other globalist forces being funded by our government. Or what's happening in Ukraine, started by our government again. You can say what you want about the Russians, but our government started it. You look at all this, this is a very, very, very dangerous time. And this whole thing is becoming a distraction from the huge crimes that are taking place. And, and Alex, we should also acknowledge the black and black crime that has been engineered by the government. It's between they, 75 and 90% yeah. of all crime against blacks is by other blacks. And they've been engineered to turn on each other and to have these gangs and the wars and even the hip hop, hip -hop culture has become... Um, has been engineered to turn on itself. And you can listen to artists like Kendrick Lamar, who's like one of the only people who acknowledges this issue. Like, why are we, why are, we can't criticize anybody until we stop killing ourselves. And this is again, a direct result of state intervention in their neighborhoods and the way people have been programmed to uh, hate each other. Absolutely, let's go to another caller here. Thanks for holding Matt. Matt in Washington, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Hello, Alex. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Well, I just wanted to uh, comment on Bill and Hillary for a second. Is that okay? Sure. I'm not going to screen your call live on air. I mean, you're, you're live. Of course, you can talk about whatever you want. Okay. So when Hillary and Obama disappeared, 
on their little meeting and they ditched the press. Do you think that Hillary was given a deal to like back out and she'd be promised the election in 2016? I don't know what happened inside that Bilderberg meeting. I just know they were there. It was a huge story. We knew they were there. The Secret Service was there. They aimed guns at us. And no dinosaur media would come out. The, the Epoch Times, the Falun Gong publication came out and covered it. Uh, Drudge linked to it. That was it. No coverage of the huge event of them disappearing for a day in a secret meeting. And the media was so controlled. When we called them, they knew they were there. But they knew not to cover it. Uh, so that's amazing. But how the worm has turned. I saw a mainstream news article. I meant to cover it last week. I, I forget where it was, but it was, I think it was Newsweek. Yeah, it was Newsweek. The Daily Beast saying that a leader had gone to their own Bilderberg type meeting. And so now that term is out in the open. Now it's safe for them to report on it. Stay there, Matt. I'm back in 70 seconds. I'm going to have you finish up the Neil and others. Julia Toriansky is our guest, bravetheworld.com, and she's been part of InfoWars reports off and on for about three years or so, and she's reaching a lot of people, and that's what's so exciting. Uh, young women, old women, young men, old men, middle-aged, whatever, they tell you you're supposed to be a kid now until you're 30, if you're a man. If you're a woman, you got to be a successful businesswoman by 15. They want to arrest the development of men end that culture, not to empower women, but to get ready to bring down the entire society. And this is all admitted by the globalists. We're going to do 30 minutes of overdrive. In the next few weeks, we're going to start doing the whole fourth hour live every day and reactivating all the affiliates that are already coming back on board. That's why at least once a week, I'm doing the whole fourth hour live. I'll be in here mo most days for the fourth hour, but I'll always have a round table of guests and my other reporters for us. So we're bringing the fourth hour back. Uh, let's go back to Matt in Washington. You got to make one point. What was your other point, Matt? Well, uh, Mike Fitzsimmons up here in Spokane just worships Ozzy Knezovich. I called his show, and he basically said, oh, it's much ado about nothing. It's a, a big deal. And, you know, I, I told him, uh, I told him it, it is a big deal. He basically hung up on me. Uh, but they just worshiped that guy. Another point I wanted to make was that if Trump keeps going, let's say he's elected president, how is he going to get everything done? The government is not a corporation. He can't just go in there and start, start signing executive orders. And if he does, are people going to accept it because it's Trump and it's the right thing to do? Uh, thirdly, music. I love your di diversity in music. And I wanted you, I, I was just kind of curious on how you came to like so many different styles of music, because I'm the same way, but I'm a, I'm a musician, so that's my... Well, I just listen to whatever I hear, and, and it doesn't matter whether I'm listening to Indian music, or Middle Eastern music, or African music, or Mexican music, or South American music, or uh, classical, rock and roll, uh, hard rock, uh, old-fashioned country. Only thing I don't like is modern country and modern hip-hop, pop, crap. I mean, a lot of it's got a catchy tune or whatever, but it's just, it's just, it's just modern stuff. It's not because I'm old. I hear a lot of new stuff that young people are doing that's not establishment, and I really love it. Uh, but the stuff put out purposefully by the music industry just does not really ever float my boat. I appreciate your call. Uh, your take on music as a weapon? Uh, well, there's just, I think a lot of these artists start out. With pure, with pure intentions and real spirit and real talent. And then they make it and they see also, first of all, they have the influences by the companies after they make it. Second of all, they have the influence by the herd of the millions of viewers online and the people that listen to them who have been so intellectually destroyed that all they want to hear is over-sexualized songs with uh, undertones of a, aggressive, a, a, an aggressive undertone. So I it's think it's very adolescent. Yeah. It's for it's for little boys that actually haven't and I watched done anything I've yet. watched plenty of interviews with artists who have said that they said, "Well, I put out a music video with the uh, with a naughty word in the title, and I get 15 million views. And I put out a piece of music that has depth to it, and I get 500 thousand. So right now, you know." Um, Life is imitating art. Art is in driving life right now. And we need to reverse that. I think art and music is a very powerful tool. And we need sure. good art and music to kind of remodel the way that we're thinking. That's a great point because they had a really good front line like a decade ago 
about the feedback loop and they studied it with experts and it wasn't that MTV was following what people wanted. They were force feeding it yeah. to control the agenda. And that's kind of my tagline. I, I have a whole video dedicated to saying, let's escape the feedback loop. Let's just break away. And that goes back to the caller's comments about Trump. We're not going to have a better world with Trump as president. He's still president. He's still controlled by the same powers. Doesn't matter. But man, is he slick. I watched his two-minute <laughs> response. I do like watching him. <laughs> I watched his response to the Univision reporter. Mm -hmm. And just the way he handled that reporter and kept making him look stupid. I mean, yeah. Trump is something else. He does and open eyes because he's been in there. He's bribed the, pol the politicians. He's seen the favorite. Well, see, he could get in trouble for that, so he owns it. He's yeah. really smart. We'll be back. Julia Taransky is our guest. BraveTheWorld.com is her website. And she is, I guess, would you call yourself an anarchist, a libertarian? And when people ask me what I do, I generally say something like, my, my only goal is to disenfranchise people from their assumed power structures. So you're an individualist anarchist. What is that? That means I don't believe in any centralized authority that works by force ruling us. That doesn't mean you can't have organization or some sort of uh, cooperation. That just means that if that exists, you can leave and you can opt out and nobody will hunt you down, make you pay your taxes or, you know, absolutely you jail. And, and there's a conspiracy by the big foundations to have communists go out and just scum, devil worshippers, you name it, literally, and wear black. And then they say they're anarchists, but then they have communist tattoos and... and they just say they're anarchists yeah, because they don't want to be honest about their communism. That's the opposite of anarchy. Yeah, Tai Tzu was an anarchist. Leo Tolstoy was an anarchist. Uh, Anselm Belgaragi was an anarchist. These, you know, 1800s philosophers, there's a whole rich body of work. And they got anarchists. taken over by the communist. Yeah, it's all got com com uh, compounded. And actually, there's strands and strands of thought, just like any philosophy. So... It's a neat, it's like anything today, uh, it's a word that triggers. But all that anarchy means is uh, the absence of government. And the what. So they have hammer and sickle flags saying <laughs> we're anarchists. That shows how dumb these kids are. It's insane. We, they're, they're reconstructing language, right? That's what they do. And when you capture language in a society, you capture the people. And they really are. Political correctness is a war on language. Mm -hmm. It really is. Um, I had an idea I ran by, you know, everyone's saying, oh, keep the uh, keep the Mexicans up, put the border, put the put the fences up. What about putting a giant fence around uh, California <laughs> and filming them like self cannibalizing uh, their with their PC thoughts and their PC culture and just make it a giant yeah. running man meets a reality <laughs> uh, TV show and wall the Californians yeah, in wall to them kill each in. other. Wall them in. We don't want them anywhere here. They're all moving to Austin because of the regulations happening in California. And then they want to put the and same they, regulations yeah. here. And they poison they the land. They want public pooping, all of the stuff they do. <laughs> keep, keep, the, keep the Californians in. I think that would solve more problems than keeping the Mexicans in. I think it should be the new California flag as a homeless guy crapping. I think so. I'm sorry. Like I have seen, like I've seen this. I was there for only a month, and I've witnessed that. It's just terrible, and it's again the direct result why of government intervention. Why, why are you being hateful? I'm just, That's discriminatory. I'm, terrible, I'm white, so I can't help. That's it. part of the culture. I am white privileged. You know, like how my family died in communist Russia, but I have privilege. Well, you're responsible for slavery. Of course. You know that was one thing about Ferguson and St. Louis. A bunch of Eastern European immigrants got killed because they're poor, they're moving into poor areas, and racist black groups beat them to death with hammers, shoot them, and they'll say, well, they're white, as if Eastern Europeans had anything to do with Africa, transatlantic slavery. It's just so stupid. It's totally insane. It's totally insane. Um, and again, it goes back to no one, you know, it's, it's a, another contradiction of the progressive mind, I, because of, if you're white, you're responsible for your people's history, but you're not responsible for yourself as an individual, so you can't have a gun. I mean, it doesn't make any or sense. Or airline pilots that could crash the whole plane and, and kill tens of thousands. Right. They can't have a gun in the cockpit. Or, or cars. I mean, cars are like this uh, uh, libertarian utopian success of human in intellect. Uh, intellect and individualism. People generally drive cars safely. But you're you're wielding a machine of tons of force that could kill anybody if you choose to. But we let people get a license over the weekend and drive a car. 
I mean, that's insane. We should ban the cars. You can kill a whole family. And that's where the